In this episode of Redneck 101, we're talking about how we catch gar. And gar are a lot of fun to catch and they're good eating. Uh, so the first thing is to get a right location, right? You have to be fishing where the fish are or you're not gonna catch any that day. And generally speaking, gar are usually a high level predator in an ecosystem. So you find the bait, uh, you're going to find the gar. So in spring, usually the bait and the gar are going to be in the warmer water. So we forget about the lower half of a reservoir. Uh, that part of the map is peeled around the back and focus on the upper half because that's where most of the bait's going to be. That's the water that's shallower, that warms first. And if you've got, you know, a river flowing into the reservoir or creeks, uh, you get a warm rain, that water is going to be warmer than most of the water in the lake. So concentrate on your creek backs and your main river inflows. There is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious lamb of God, Messiah, holy one. Uh, find the bait is usually in a little bit of shallow water. Uh, when we went fishing the other day and the, the videos that you see, uh, the main body of the lake, the water was still 55 degrees in early spring. So we just went on a quest for warmer water. We went up one of the main river arms. Uh, there was a cove. Uh, the water in the back of the cove was 64 degrees. If you get a temperature differential in spring of five to 10 degrees, find, find that warmer spot, that's where the gar are gonna be, most likely because that's where the bait's going to be. All right, um, the gear, uh, we like to use stout poles. These are bigger fish, uh, 40 to 80 power, 40 to 80 pound power pro on a stout rod and reel that can handle. You know, how big is the fish you're gonna catch? You know, you should be ready for at least a 20 pound fish maybe a much larger fish, depending on what's in the body of water where you're fishing. We like uh, 50 to 80 pound fluorocarbon leaders. Uh, and, but for alligator gar, we like steel leaders. Uh, for, for most pieces of gar, we, we like two watt to four watt J hooks. And here's why. You don't hook gar in the mouth. It's a very, very uh, hard mouth. And you got a much better chance catching the gar if they swallow the hook and they get deeply hooked, you're most likely going to catch them. Uh, so that's why you need to use a smaller hook because especially like for long nose gar or spotted gar, they've got that small mouth. They're not going to be able to swallow, you know, a seven odd hook with a really big piece of bait. Although this is what we use for alligator gar. If alligator gar are what you're fishing for, go ahead and upsize the hook because they have the bigger mouth. Uh, but for species of gar with the smaller hooks, uh, with the smaller mouths, we use smaller hooks and smaller baits. Uh, either cut shad about the size of uh, sort of between a quarter and a 50 cent piece in size, um, or large minnows. You can use other things. As the water gets warmer, once the water gets to 60 or 70 degrees, you can switch to using live bluegill and things of that sort. But they need to be on the smaller size, depending on the size of the mouth of the gar you imagine you're going to catch. Study the contour pit maps and the aerial picks. Uh, this will tell you where the shallow water is, the water that's going to warm up first. Uh, this will tell you uh, where the creek backs are. Also look at the aerial picks because there are some spots that can look really good, but then you have uh, features that you don't notice on the contour maps that are obvious in the aerial picks that will be indicators. Sometimes you might have a cove that looks great, but there's so many boat houses in that cove, it gets really hard to fish. On the other hand, if you're looking at the aerial maps, we have a preference for muddy water. All other factors being equal, uh, the muddy water is going to warm up first and put the fish there. Uh, we also just think the bait and the gar tend to, we catch more fish in the muddier water than in the clearer water. And you can see that oftentimes in the aerial picks. Now when the fish takes the bait, you need to give it time to swallow the bait. We've reeled in a lot of gar over the years and they'll let you reel them in, get all the way just about to the net and then they'll just open the, their mouth and let the piece of bait go. 
uh, because we were reeling them in too early when the bait's still in the mouth they haven't swallowed it yet. You got to give them time to swallow the bait and don't set the hook. Ease the fish into the net because there's sometimes when the hook is in part of that hard part of the mouth or maybe the strings kind of wrapped around their teeth somehow and if you can ease it into the net uh, you just have a better chance than if they're doing those crazy head shakes because you're stabbing at it. You need to give gar some time to tire out. Right, a, a tire gar is a lot easier to get to the net because they want to do the tail jumping thing. They, they really can go nuts at the net if you haven't given them a chance to wear themselves out. And always, uh, we pray for success. We ask the Lord to help us to rule over the fish of the sea, as it says in the Bible. We ask the Lord Jesus to give us our daily bread uh, because if the gar is legal to eat, we're going to take them home and eat them because that's great food. So, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we had a successful fishing trip the other day, and keep on praying, keep on fishing. So take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit talk. Walk through the written word of Jesus. Take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit talk. Walk.